Uh, my name is Takashi Imamura. Okay. Uh, I am in charge of policies uh, for building energy conservation uh, in Japan. In my view, uh, I'm afraid that we lag a bit behind foreign countries in building energy saving efforts, but uh, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce some, some of our recent efforts, uh, challenges regarding the building energy efficiency policies. Let me share with you my PowerPoint slide. All right. Here we go. Okay, today uh, <clears throat> it is a privilege to uh, talk about our policies for building energy uh, conservation for residential and non residential buildings in Japan. Okay, uh, like other countries, <clears throat> Japan has declared last October that we will strive to realize carbon neutrality in 2050. And Japan has also submitted the uh, NDC, the Nationally Determined Contribution, and announced that Japan aims to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions by 46% in 2030 from its 2013 levels. And furthermore, Japan will continue efforts in its challenge to meet the high goal of cutting its emission by 50%. Okay, this is the famous uh, climate classification map in Japan. It's located in the Far East. So, if I put Japan on top of the European map, uh, Japan is uh, located about here. Um, so, I think uh, most of the European countries are toward the north from Japan. Okinawa seems to be in Africa. And this slide shows you uh, the regional classification uh, decided by the Building Energy Efficiency Act of Japan. Our Building Energy Efficiency Act, we classify Japan into eight regions. Region one and two, uh, which is Hokkaido, is northernmost and pretty much cold due to the prevailing winds and the cold currents in the ocean. On the other hand, region eight, uh, which is uh, Okinawa, is southernmost and very warm. Uh, they don't need the heating because they don't really have the winter season. The main island in between, uh, where Tokyo and Kyoto exist, have pretty, mu pretty much uh, the long distance from north to south. Okay, uh, this is one shows you the international comparison of household energy consum uh, consumption by use. <clears throat> As you see, uh, but please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Japan's consumption is about one third uh, of, the, of that of the United States and about half that in Germany and other European countries. As you see in the red bar chart uh, here, uh, Japan's energy consumption for heating is particularly low, uh, while consumption of hot water supply is higher, which is in the uh, green bar. Uh, while people uh, in other countries heat or cool uh, their homes for a long time, most Japanese way of living is, uh, what can I say, uh, intermittent uh, heating or cooling. So Japanese, uh, people heat or cool their homes only when they are at home. So, but we, however, we use much hot water because we love taking a bath in the bathtub, as you see in the green one. And this one <clears throat> shows the household energy consumption by region and by use. As you see, the amount of household energy consumption varies by region. Region 1, Hokkaido, which is on top, uh, consumes as much energy as European countries, mainly for heating. 
However, uh, Okinawa, the second from the bottom, uh, consume uh, less than half of the energy consumption of Hokkaido, and they don't uh, they don't need heating, as I told you before. <clears throat> this one shows the trends in Japan, uh, Japan's uh, energy conservation by sector. The Japan's consumption of the uh, commercial and household sectors, uh, which is which accounts for about 30% of the entire energy consumption, has increased by 70%, 17% <laughs> from the level of 1990. Therefore, I think it is crit critical to drastically drastically strengthen measures to save energy and reduce CO2 in the field of housing and buildings. This one shows the Japan's uh, reduction targets in the new uh, plan for global warming countermeasures, which was decided by the cabinet uh, last month. <clears throat> Uh, the plan, this plan strengthens the reduction target from the pre previous plan. And the commercial and household sectors, which is uh, in green and purple, I should I say, uh, accounts for about 41% of total uh, reduction targets. And the portion outlined in the red border uh, in the commercial and housing sectors uh, must be achieved by the measures on houses and buildings. So now uh, I would like to briefly explain our Building Energy Efficiency Act. This act was established in 2015 and it was revised in 2019 as you see in the right hand side of this uh, slide, to cover the medium size and non residential buildings. When, when it was established, uh, this one was only uh, applied, I mean, the mandatory obligation was applied to large scale uh, non residential building, which is uh, 2000 square meters or more. Now it is uh, it includes medium size which is 300 square meters or more. <clears throat> but of course, this, is, this applies for only new constructed buildings. Um, this obligation system is linked with building permission process. So if you do not comply with the energy efficiency standards, you will not be able to start constructing the new buildings. There are also other obligation systems for residential, as you see in the green borders, and also the smaller one, less than 300 square meters, small size buildings to follow energy efficiency standards, but they are not as strict as the one for large and medium long residential buildings. Oh. Sorry, maybe I, this one. Okay, this one, this slide shows you the relationship between energy consumption and the number of building starts by use and by size. As you see in the orange uh, border, the number of buildings subject to the obligation compliance, which is uh, medium and large size and non-residential buildings. <clears throat> accounts for only 3.4% of total uh, total number of building starts, as you see in the bottom bar on the left-hand side. And, uh, but their energy consumption accounts for uh, more than 50% of total energy consumption, as you see on, on the upper side of, the, of this chart, on the left-hand side. So I think uh, this obligation system so far works very efficiently and effectively. Anyway, uh, we are planning to cover all the buildings to follow the energy efficiency standards in the very near future, including the residential buildings.
<clears throat> okay. Uh, this one shows the rate of compliance with energy efficiency standards. Left side is non-residential and right hand side is residential. As you see on the right hand side, uh, the rate of com compliance with the energy efficiency standards for newly constructed residential buildings has been rising year by year. And the rate of compliance in total residential buildings exceeded uh, in total uh, 80%. <clears throat> 81% to be precise in fiscal year 2019. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> we will have to make them 100% in the near future, as I told you, by amending the act. Okay, this one shows you the outline of the energy efficiency standards for buildings in Japan. The, the, the Japanese energy efficiency standards for buildings consists of two standards. And the first thing, the first is primary uh, primary energy consumption standards, and the, the other one is envelope uh, insulation standards. The envelope insulation standards require that the heat loss per surface area of the envelope to be less than the standard value, and the standard is this stand, envelope standard is only applied to residential building residential buildings so far in Japan. <clears throat> okay, this slide shows the in international comparison of the envelope uh, standards for residential buildings. As I mentioned earlier, our building uh, energy <clears throat> efficiency act classifies Japan into eight regions from Hokkaido to Okinawa. Um, we have pretty much we have pretty much long the distance from north north to south, as I told you. Therefore, the thermal insulation or envelope insulation, shall I say, for region four or above, region region four to region eight, shall I say, uh, are a bit generous, I think, compared to your Euro, uh, European or American. But uh, the but the value of Hokkaido, which is region one or two, <clears throat> is close to the United States or northern European countries. So anyway, we are planning to strengthen these values to the level of so-called net zero net zero energy housing standards by 2030 at the latest. As I showed you in the arrow in the in the arrow. <clears throat> oh, by the way, um, I would like to have take this opportunity to ask you one simple question. Uh, I I as I told you, we our uh, envelopes insulation standards. Uh, only applies to residential buildings so far. But uh, does your country apply to non-residential, uh, you know, the standard non-residential buildings as well as residential buildings? I just what, would like to know how, what the situation is to, you know, reconsider the Japanese standards from now on. Uh, okay. Oh. Maybe I should skip this, but this is just the definition of zero energy housing in Japan. Uh, we require high envelope uh, insulation standards that are stricter than the energy efficiency standards. And also oh, the 20% reduction of primary uh, consumption from the energy efficiency standards. And also the introduction of renewable energy to reduce primary energy consumption to net zero or, or less. We also have the indication system or display system, shall I say, uh, for energy saving performance, which is called BELS. The system indicates uh, five levels from one, one star to five stars, according to energy saving performance evaluated by a third party. <clears throat> This slide shows you the thermal uh, 
insulation performance of uh, housing stock. As you may have, as you may have the similar issues in your countries, it is a big challenge to increase energy saving performance in the existing buildings here in Japan. Here in Japan, uh, only about 13% of the total housing stock, which is about 50 million units, complied with the current energy efficiency standards, and about 29% of the total housing stock is uninsulated at all. This is a big problem. So I would like to raise you the second question, uh, if I may. I would really like to learn how you deal with the existing buildings in your country. <laughs> I just, I'm just curious. And the existing, are the existing buildings uh, subject to any legal restrictions? Or do you, do you promote a renovation uh, by financial incentives or something? Uh, here in Japan, it is difficult to mandate or force individual property owners to renovate their buildings. So we try to give them as much incentives as possible, like subsidies and low interest rate loan or tax incentives. So anyway, this is a, a big challenge from now uh, to tackle this, uh, you know, the stock problem. Okay. Uh, so I would like to conclude by uh, with this slide. Uh, I'd like to uh, touch on the future policies for building energy conservation in Japan. We are planning to submit a bill uh, to amend the Building Energy Efficiency Act next year, early next year, in order to strengthen the energy saving measures. First of all, as I told you, we are planning to mandate compliance with the uh, energy efficiency standards for all the newly constructed buildings, including residential buildings, by fiscal year 2015, uh, 2025, sorry. Secondly, uh, we will try to generate, gradually update, upgrade the energy efficiency standards to the level of zero energy standards by fiscal year uh, 2030 at the latest. We also string, strengthen the display or indicate uh, system of the energy saving performance for residential and non-residential buildings when they are sold or le uh, leased. Sorry. And finally, regarding the renewal of energy, we will set the target. We have set the target to install solar panels on top of the roofs of. 60% of newly constructed detached houses by fiscal year 2030. This is our pretty close uh, future goals uh, by uh, the 2030 to strengthen our energy efficiency. Okay, I think that's about it. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.